Um, actually, in this session today, we are not going to follow anything that, that that's implemented in in the book in the book actually, because the book, the chapter nineteen of the book, the book let me share. Um, actually, it talks about using. Oh, where is it here? Actually, this uh, the the chapter itself uh, starts uh, talking about using Travis CI for for checking on GitHub. Um, just to make it clear, uh, Travis CI is a continuous integration um, infrastructure <laughs> service that. Actually, every time you send your code to GitHub, it actually uploads your code to this Travis CI service and tries to try to run it on a remote machine. It was the most used infrastructure before, but now since um, GitHub created GitHub Actions that was on the last year, it, it remained some time in, in beta, but then, but, but, but now um, I think in, to the mid, um, uh, the, the, during the 2020, it, it went to to a release state. So, so uh, most of the R infrastructure moved to to this GitHub Actions, and actually the R lib um, R lib um, organization that that is an organization that is also maintained by. By a, by a lot of people, but also by the by the R Studio people, you can see like Adley Hickam, the Gene Hess, the, most of the people that also develops the the Tideverse and other uh, other R tools. They created these GitHub Actions, uh, these R Lib Actions, and GitHub repo that maintains most of the of the GitHub Actions that are used. Um, especially in the Tideverse packages and, and other packages. Actually, um, GitHub itself has this marketplace. If you look here, you can find in the marketplace, you can find, um, if you go here in actions, you can find GitHub actions about anything you want. You, you see um, GitHub actions for uh, creating documents, for adding documentation, for um, for example, sending your code to to um, to a cloud instance, some some different uses. Um, actually, for the R community, um, those actions that are hosted on the R action actions repo, they aren't in the marketplace. So you you can't use the the, the marketplace to find the the those 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 actions but um, there are other people that develop actions to that that can host those those actions here you see that there are some actually just two <laughs> the only those two to benchmark your code and this one this one actually tries to implement some automatic testing but since most of the community um, are using actually this repository. Um, we are going to, to focus on that. And also, because they use this package has a function to automatically doing all the setup. So we don't need to, to actually come here on GitHub or download code or anything like that. So I will start already with um, the demonstration of how to, to do it, especially continuing from our project from last week that was this, I created this small package, remember the math operations package that had only one function for doing the addition, the sum, summing two values. And oh, let me increase the font here. Um, if you remember, the only thing that we did was creating, oh, let me increase more of this. It's okay. All right, this is enough. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Nice grade. Yeah. Um, we, we created this function that sums two values and we created some tests for it. Uh, we 
went through this uh, the the both the test package operation that test that runs this test on the with the, those expectations that we created, and we also show it the check. Um, the, the check operation is the most important before releasing a package because it, it, it checks a lot of different aspects of your package that um, that that's addressed here in the chapter in the chapter 19. Um, our the, the companion book of our group of the R4 data science learning community um, states the some of the learning objectives of the chapter 19 is as understanding the kind of errors and output from the check function, especially because um, when when a warning or, a, or an error warning or note comes from the check, it usually is related with one of those topics. But uh, from my experience, um, the the the, first, the best the best thing is to actually run the check when you are if you develop if you uh, think you finish it, uh, to to develop a function and 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 testing your function you run the check for a package and and if in the output from the this, this check will have some information already of of how to address with those with those those errors, close this. Um, for example, it says that my package don't have any any error right now. Um, I will um, I will show now how to set the. Actually, let me delete this because I, I I was already running that for the setup. They will also uh, when we created the package with the with the use this create package, it don't sets uh, any it don't sets the Git infrastructure that's necessary for for using the the GitHub. Um, actually, you need to have your Git GitHub user already synced on your on your machine. Um, the um, if you never use it Git or you never use it GitHub, if you if you try to run this function, they use Git inside the inside. The, it will probably run a, an error about um, your that you need to set your user and your email. Um, the they use this package have this Git config function that helps to to address this, 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 the, the, this configuration. Um, but science mine is already configured. I will not address that. When you use the use git function, it will, um, first it will, it will create the necessary infrastructure that is creating the dot git folder inside your package folder, and it will already try to to commit all your package, all your files on this Git repository. You have to confirm here. Yes, I want. Um, yeah, and, and also when the when you create your package, you don't have this Git 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 panel on R Stu R Studio, so it's necessary to reload R Studio when you do that, and it will. Reload my my session, um, and the, the other thing that you need is having a, a GitHub account. You need to go to GitHub.com and create your GitHub account. Since I, I already have my GitHub account, I will um, I will show how to sync your local. Uh, repository, the, the, the directory where you are developing your 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 package with the oh, with the with the GitHub repo. Um, I don't have like the GitHub. You, you can see I don't have the uh, GitHub repo called Math Operations. If you want to manually create a, a GitHub repo, you need to go here, new, 
and there are some you can if you want to create uh, it manually it's a good practice to have the repository name as the same name as the folder where you are developing since the also R uses the same name as the uh, you use the same string and the same set of characters as the name of the folder and the name of the package so you can go here and create your math operations but i will actually not do that i will use the use this has also a use github github uh, function to, to to do that automatically for you if you want to create for example a private github repo you need to add this private true but the, the, the default is to create a, a public repository. I will let it be public. Um, if you also need to, uh, also for using this GitHub uh, infrastructure, you need to, to set your credentials for the GitHub service and, and use this has also this creden uh, Git credentials fun no this one was the bracket because uh, it it also changes for using the credentials package if, if you try to run the use this use git function it will um use github function and you don't have your credential set it will um walk you through through a set for, through how to set up this these your credentials there are some different ways to, of setting your credential. You can add login and password, but you also can generate a, um, a token that you just need to add your token that is saved inside your computer to so you don't you don't need to 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 log in GitHub every time you use. Since I already have this setup, I will run this function. You can see that. Uh, it will already sync my folder, the default branch that is master, create a, a, a repository on my GitHub user, and and already opened my 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 browser with with my repository open. It's pretty straightforward. Actually, we did not create a. I read me so you don't have any documentations. I didn't set any kind of um, documentation for the package. So I, I will also use use this to add a use readme RMD, to create the readme file. The, that's a markdown format. Um, when you create the readme file with the they use this function, it also creates a, a pre-commit hook. Because if you try to commit your, your repository, your Git repository without updating your, without knitting your R Markdown document to the Markdown format that is the one that GitHub uses, it will, it will try to, it, it will actually run in an error for, to say, to say, and to force you to always update your readme. For example, if I, I will also show how to do the basic uh, Git, Git operations inside our studio. If you open this Git panel, it will show all the files that aren't um, committed yet. For example, it will, it will, uh, I just created this readme file and I will try to commit it. If I try to commit this, this, this readme file, it will open this window. I can I can add a, a message, for example, um, docs uh, uh, read me read me add. Um, you see that we we were actually run an error. That is exactly what I said. I didn't need the 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 markdown document, so I can come here and need the document. Oh, I actually. It's one because I didn't install the package. Not okay, I can just, just comment it. Let me knit it again. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. It opens the, the the Markdown file for you to look if it's everything okay. Okay, it's okay. So I can add the, I will now commit both the readme Markdown in the R Markdown file. And now I, I perform the a commit. And if you want to sync your, your local repository with GitHub, you have to do the GitHub push operation that you can just type here or, or if you don't, or if you're on, on the default, the full panel, it's here, push. Now that I pushed my repository to the upstream, um, we can update the, and the, the remote repo and now we have a documentation right it's it's this is the basic workflow of using git and github with during the package development if you want your repository to be always synced and now i will show the usage of the github actions itself um you can find the the actions that a repository uses inside this action panel um our repo here don't, don't have any it actually say says here how to set up one but i will show how to do that inside there also um this the and the, the rlib repositories uh, this repository actually uh, hosts several different actions we are going through some of them and they use this and those use this also have um, um, a function called use use github actions uh, with the with the default use github action we it, it's actually kind of kind of confusing because the the use github action uh, function you can set um any github action you can pass for this function the the i don't know the the url of a repository and it will set everything for you in the in your in your in the folder you are developing but 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 they have also a, a default set of of actions that you can that you can add automatically. Um, the most used actions are the ones related to to testing packages on different operational systems, um, and also the Tidyverse team also tests the packages on the five last releases of our packages or of of our versions. For example, we are now in the version four point zero point five. They will test if a package runs in every operational system like windows mac os linux at least in in one version of linux and they will also uh, test if if your package compiles and run all the tests on 4.0.5 4.0.0.5 4.0.5 and also they test on the development branch because actually the the R project itself, during the develop the development time of a of a new version of R, they they also they also maintain the um, they also have a public version of the that's not not the release version yet. The the beta version is also public released, so that there is a way to actually test if your package builds on the next version of R to know if your package is also um future proof i would say and that there is this uh and the one the the actions that we can find in the um, they use this package there is this full the, the github action check full will be the one that tests in both the three major os's and also in in different versions of of r and they also have this release the, re the release is the most basic one. They will just test your package on one operational system and then, and just the release version of R. I will use the, that one just to, to show the basic example. When you when you, you run this function, what it will do, it will create 
a dot github folder in your in your in your package set these workflows this is what's necessary to run the github action you have to have a github folder with this workflow folder and then you need to have a yaml file with the description of your um of your action and this is and the name that you give to your file is the is the name of your action basically and you see that's that these are cmd check action what it will do it uses this yaml format for for documenting the 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 action uh, yaml is, is a pretty common um, file format used nowadays especially for for configuration for the for settings and um it, it's it's a format used especially when you need something that needs to be read by a machine and also to be human readable you can actually read it pretty it's kind of easy after you 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 learn how to how to use it how to read it um yaml is also is actually um the evolution of of the json format and also json was kind of the evolution of the xml format because the for example the xml format was really uh, was easy it was created for having configurations that was good for machines to read but it was usually generated really rude files and then it evolved for the json format for streamlining um configuration sent by the internet and the yaml file is kind of the evolution of that um so it it, it um you, you will see a lot of yaml um, configuration files during the, the next future if you not use it to that yet um here you you can set some uh when your the action will be run for example this this basic key action is set to every time your repository is pushed to the github branches um the default is, is includes both main and master when when the repository is created for the first time it um the default is to be created as master so oh, this is not my repository <laughs> this one <laughs> is it, it, the default is to be created as master but it's also um um that there is a there is a convention that most of the of the tools are moving to use main instead of master i will not address this this the, why that now but um you you will see a lot of a lot of repos that use master or, or main as the as the default but for for but but if you develop your your package on a different branch for example if you create a dev branch or um a different branch for a, a specific fe feature you can add here for example if i want to add a dev branch for example you can add it here uh, and this action is also set to every time a pull request is done on on this on this on this branch is also um, this is the name it's just a string and now is the important part it's the is the jobs that are run when when the when the action actually executes um this one the default is to test on mac os um when they released the, the first version of this of this action that they set mac os especially because it's faster to build to build packages on mac os cause and cron because of the binary format that cron releases because um linux usually you need to install package from source and it takes more time and more computing resources but now since the science our studio released the public package man manager you have ways to already install um the the compiler the binary versions of the of our packages uh, i will show that later but yeah the, the, this is set to run on mac os uh, here on the env 
you you can you can set uh, environment variables you can set anything that that your action will use and, and the steps of your package uh, when you see especially these ones that that contains the users the, those are pre predefined um, actions for example this one is for checking out your git re re repo it's just to say that your your repo will would be checked out should you run the the um, the action this one okay because what, what happens now on, on the github action it will send your code now to, to the to the git repository and it will be run on a remote machine so you, you have to think logically what steps are needed to to run your package so the first thing is to install r this action actually install r and configure r to Install dependencies. Okay, no, this one don't start apps. Actually, you have another step here to install dependence. And this this one is a, a good example of and uh, this one is a um an action that's configured outside of this file. For example, if you if you come here to the Arlib actions, here you have the actual code that is run. Like you, you come here to this uh, setup R, and here you can see that. They have, um, you, you, you can write your, your actions in different languages. For example, this one is actually written in TypeScript. That is a, a variation of JavaScript. And if you, and if you check this, um, this, this file, you see that what it does is download R, install R, configure R for different operational system. I will not run through everything here, but all actions also have, this is most important if you try to develop uh, a, custom, uh, a custom action for, for your usage. And in this action.yaml, you can set like some variables, some environmental variables that can be set in the, for example, this one for setting R, they have uh, a variable for setting the default R version. If you don't test, if you don't want your, because the, the default is to run on the release version that is the current version, but it, you can set a different version for R and you can also set um, more than one version to, to test at a time. Um, yeah, the, the, this is the basic structure. Now, now let's run it. Oh yeah, it, it's installed the dependencies here. It will install the remote check package to, to allow us to install different dependencies and also in these uh, in, the, in the next step that is the check step what it will actually run is this rcmd check function that that runs the the same actually not the same but it, it's almost the same as running the dev tools check um, and the only thing that you need so it's having this, this YAML file on your computer. And we can come here and, um, and, and commit our, our, our action file to, to our remote repo. Well, I will use this semantic um, commit and um, release our lead. Release GitHub action. Oh, no, wait. Uh, and push it to the to the master branch. When it when we have this file in our repository, it will set everything automatically. Let me update here. If you see now my GitHub repo already have the GitHub file, or the GitHub folder with the YAML file here on workflows, the, the, the one that we talked about. And just, just because we have this, this file, it will already start here on the action panel, our action. Here you can see in real time what's going on 
with the, to say it's in progress, there are 28 seconds that started running. And for each step that is defined in the YAML file, it will start here. Um, and here you can actually see everything, like it's installing the R package, the same thing that would be running on your computer if you're trying to, to install your package. Since our package don't have any dependency to just run a base R function, it will not do anything special, but um, if we, we added the dependency, it will be installing during this time. If anything fails during this time, it will address it here. I will uh, just show later. You, uh, actually, it runs on a really modest machine. I, I don't remember now the limits, but it's probably just like one core or less than like one gigabyte of run, something like that. So depending on the action, it will take a lot of time. It can take 10, 15 minutes to run. Um, but now let's do the, okay, yeah, so we, it already done. Now it says that everything is checked up and run. So we can see that our, um, it actually run all those tests that we defined in the test, in the test that file and it went on. If we set um, for example, if, if we do something, implement a new feature, and for any example, it will now fail the test. It will it would fail on that, on the on the check step of the of the action. For example, I will now instead of using this, this I will show the the full the full GitHub action. Um, actually, all of those actions use the same name. So it's saying if, if I want to, to overwrite it, I will. Um, no, here, here, here you see a, a more complex one. The, um, you can see that this one, it's, oh, it's not right. Let me see, it's using the, the old version here. Okay, yeah. It, it, here you see a package a uh, file that's much more complex. The I the YAML file, let me just say so it's not running on Solaris. No, no, because actually it's not that they don't want to, to test on Solaris, it's because GitHub actions don't support Solaris. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but Kran does. Kran does, it's 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 actually a problem. <laughs> um I don't know why, but it it actually use it in older version. Maybe my use this is not updated because actually it, it's testing on like R 3.6, but uh, it was supposed to to use this. I, I will show in the repo here. Um, when you, the actions itself, they are here. Oh no, no, it's not this one is the, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no matter. That the because the most recent it was already to be running on Ubuntu 20.04, 20, 20 and, and it was supposed to be for R4.05. And um, also CRAN uses some names instead of of the the version the version numbers to address the release and the um, and the, the development versions. For example, if you you don't know which version of R is the most recent, you can use this release string. Um, and, and there is also a, a, de a, dev a development string, a version of R that will test on the next version. So the the default of this use, use GitHub action check full is to test on Mac OS, on Windows, both the release and the, and the first version prior to 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 the release and also tests on and actually on Linux that they perform the the most the most um, the more complex versions of our tests that are here they are testing on the development version the current version the the prior version and also three more versions before the, the, this, this is what the tidyverse support they supported at least five versions of R. And here they they had the, they added a lot of different steps 
they, they install R, then they set up Pandoc if you want to, to build your vignettes in PDF in HTML format. And a lot of, actually, you can set your GitHub action to build whatever kind of documentation. Um, it, it actually creates a cache of the installed package, so it don't need to, to reinstall the package every time. And the next step, install system depend, dependencies. That is, you can see that here, they have uh, set it to just run on, on Linux because they, they don't, um, how can I see that? And these system dependencies is mostly just supported on, on Linux. It uses the, um, oh yeah, they updated that. Yeah, that they are using the, the pack package for, for using, for, for trying to detect auto, automatically the system dependent requirements of some packs and trying to install that automatically. Actually, this one is kind of, um, not every package has, has the system documented really well documented. So sometimes you need to, to add an additional step here to install. For example, if, if you're, if you're developing a package that, that, that needs a new system dependency, you would come here and create a new step here and add a, and, and add a shell the, the same way that they added a shell here, a shell, a shell call here, you would add, an, for example, if you're using Ubuntu, you would use an a empty install and install package or, or any kind of arbitrary code you can be run. For example, here they are trying to install development dependencies. So um, what this means, they, they actually download code from GitHub if you state on, on your description file that, that any of your, um, of your dependencies is actually not a current package, it's a GitHub repo. You, they will install that also. They will upload the, the session info. You see that it's a really complex action. It will check the package. It will create a file with the outputs of test that to be, um, to be shown on the, on, on the action folder, on the action panel and will upload the results. I have a question. You can see. So if um, your action takes too long or maybe takes um, too much memory, will you receive a warning or it will just take longer? I will say that I, I don't know the values right now, but um, it will fail in some of those steps and that in the, and the output would be would be easy to understand what's going on. Um, the, uh, like I said, it, it, it's a um, it's kind of new feature. It's not that that used yet, but and it's it's actually kind of simple to use. I will show an example. For example, if you go to the use this to the use this repo on oh this one I hardly use. They use this repo. You can see here. Um, one thing that is good for uh, of using actions is that you, for any repo that uses action, you can see um, what went on before. For example, they use this repo had an in commit like four days ago, and this cross here actually signed that it didn't run the the actions. Let's check what went on. Try to debug it. Um, for example, they, you, you can see that they they actually run a lot of different tests. They, they run this RCMD check, but they also run a, a linter, um, another linter. Oh, they have an action to automatically set up the package down website. Like every time they update the, the repo here, it will, it will automatically um, update the package down website. And this test coverage is to, it's just to, to have uh, the test coverage written in the, in the first, I think, in the, in the readme. No, not in the readme, yeah, it's somewhere in the package. 
Let me just show it here. Usually it's pretty common to see here to have this, um, this badge here saying that if your package is actually, you, you can set this badge, badge on the readme of your package that will automatically change if your actions failed or not. So you, you can see it here. It, and, and, and uh, for example, they also have a badge for, for showing the, the code coverage, the version that is released on, on Chrome. On the, actually, when, when we, the first time we, we set the, the first time we use, they use, use this, use GitHub action, it, it actually automatically add, added this, this badge to, to my readme. Um, so if, uh, if we re re need our document and re-upload it to, to GitHub, it will already have the, this, the, same, the same badge here. Okay, what is going on? No. Um, just an example. Mm, but but um, and also on the action repository you can see here they have uh, you can see some different actions that they maintain here in this repo they have this repo to set up R, to set up pandoc that that's using on that but they have some other other actions that they they maintain for example this this tiny text if you're if your package depends on, on, on LaTeX, on LaTeX, you, you, for example, if you're building um, your VNets or documentation using LaTeX, you, you can set that to be built inside um, uh, an action. If um, the, the, there, are, there are some actions to, to only run, run when, some, when someone pushes to your to your GitHub, oh, because actually one thing that I didn't address is actually you can set your GitHub action to actually change the code. For example, uh, here we, we, we run just the, the checking, but you can set some, some artifacts to, to, to come back to your, to your repo. For example, it can create some files. I um, don't know a good example. Actually, if you, if you watch the, um, the session from the last cohort, actually they, they, they had a, a really impressive uh, presentation of Yon Sid that he shows how to use GitHub Actions to set a really complex web of development. They show that he has like several GitHub repos that one updates, it actually communicates with the other repo and updates a web, a, a web page with the coverage with the and actually like send messages to slack it's it's a really complex um thing i i'm i'm here just just showing the really basic ones um i will update the 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 package just just, just to show the more complex output but yeah it's mostly what i was what I was preparing for today. So we can now discuss. <laughs> I will wait to leave. So you, you have any, any doubts or any comments? Any... Yes, we can I think I saw a video, um, I guess a few days ago, where it will, when you're doing a pull request, then uh, it will actually trigger GitHub actions so that people will know whether the pull request actually breaks the, the repo or not. Oh yeah, that, this, is, this is a good usage. That is, that sounds really useful for collaborative projects. Sure, sure. <laughs> So um, yeah, I guess you can do so many things. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to, to, to address all the possibilities. <laughs> I'm actually curious, um, how do they make profits out of this? 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the, this is something important. It, it, uh, it's actually only free if your if your project is open source. If it's a uh, open, if you have uh, an organization and create um, a private repo and try to run um, GitHub Actions, you have a limit, of, and and they have a cost associated with how many actions you you push, and they actually you only see it on the on the last cohort actually said, no, I think it wasn't. No, yeah, some, uh, I read it somewhere. Because actually, for example, the Mac OS kernels actually cost 20 times more than the, than the Linux ones. So uh, for open source projects, you don't have to mind about those things. But if you are in a GitHub Enterprise, I think GitHub Enterprise account or GitHub organization with private repos, you have some, some kind of limits of how you can do that. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I actually I, I never tried to do anything of that. I just uh, it was just something that I read somewhere. And uh, actually, there there is a really oh I forgot to add that I, I will send later on um, on this Slack. There is a good presentation about GitHub Actions on the R Studio conference of 2020. Uh, I forgot who was the presenter, but is it the one by Jim Hester? Yeah, it was when they created this. It's probably here on the on the repo. When created the the these are Lib actions, they they presented it on the on the High Studio conference. Um, yeah, <laughs> anything is possible with GitHub actions. <laughs> I, I addressed the most common ones that that are associated with with guaranteeing that your package works. And then that's the topic of the of the chapter. And um, the the updates to the to the use this package related to to using GitHub Actions are are recent i think it changes also a lot in the in the last version of uh, of the use this package and now it's working really fluid you can do everything inside github inside the use this package so i tried also to address the most straightforward workflow of doing everything inside that so you, you don't you don't you don't even need to open your browser if you have everything set correctly inside your 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 R Studio session, you can just use use these commands, and will it will actually open the browser for you. <laughs> so, because um, in the past, I would say that, for if you are not a, a computer a, a, a computer a pro, I don't know how to say that, a computer expert. Uh, like setting the GitHub, set, set, setting the Git, it, it's kind of complex um, operation. But using the use this workflow, it's you can do really advanced stuff with basic knowledge of the and also following the 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 book, the Arpeggi's book. <laughs> So yeah, I hope uh, yeah. everyone starts using it soon. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Especially, yeah. Uh, I'm still trying to um, make the test work for a plot because, well, um, for my analysis, what I usually did is um, like a simple function to make plots or to do um, the, the analysis and and it's it, and the problem with me in adopting tests before is because the example that is usually presented is okay you have a function to add two numbers and then of course you can you can just set uh, like a check whether one plus one equals two okay that is very obvious but then I think after last week you mentioned about the snapshot try to few things and it worked, it's it's still difficult. I, I still haven't make it work really perfectly, 
but there is a way now that I think I can find um, useful and adapt to my pipeline. Yeah, um, actually, I, I have I hadn't used the, the, the snapshot functionality, um, but I, I know that it's the it's the way of testing it. Um, yeah. If you don't mind with the time, I can try to show an example of, of what you can test, for example, with a ggplot. Uh, don't know if it would be useful. <laughs> oh, that would be great. Yeah. For example, the, sure. using the same people, if we create a function, use this, use uh, like um, a good plot. <laughs> and oh, what? Oh. <laughs> cool. And also, this use test. Now I will create a, a function just to to show a, a ggplot, for example. Um, the plot is a function that um, receives data and outputs a plot. For example, it will receive the ggplot and set up a ggplot output with um, data and add uh, just a um, oh. and add uh, just just one geom, for example. Uh, uh, ggplot two geom. For example, now uh, we can use the, for example, the empty cars just to have a reset. set. Uh, for example, if you use the empty cars, it's actually on the, it's not on the ggplot package, but yeah, it's a, just for example, we can use the, for example, to plot a scatter plot with, let me just check the names here. For example, X would be um, MPEG and Y would be C, just to no. uh, spare the data. Oh, okay. Yeah, I will actually not use this. It's working. Yeah, it's actually working. Okay, we, we just have a function that plots, right? And I will create some kind of, yes, uh, we, have a, we have a fixed function. And what, what, what we can test of this function? Um, you can save this, the output of this, this function. For example, plot result. Okay. Now we have the, for, for, this is specifically for ggplot, but it's the kind of um, mindset that you can think about this. Because actually the, the plot object has a lot of information about what you expect on, on this, mm. on this, for example, um, if you use the, the, um, no, wait, let me check if this is working, yeah. Actually, the ggplot, for example, you, you can test the class of your, uh, you can test the class if the class is the, if it has this ggplot class, for example, you can um, test that, um, expect to equal, For, um, for example, if, if for some reason you have a, your function and during the, your function done anything exotic and it will actually run and output something, but the thing that your function output wasn't the plot itself. So it will plot anything that is actually don't have the class, 
the class. So you you can test if if your if your if your object has the class. Oh yeah, and that, uh, it it also has more more than one. You you have to to add the the full output, but actually I think there is a there is a, a an expectation for classes. That is the spec class. Um, because actually it's not an S3 object. The, so yeah, you, it would just need like the, um, yeah, you, you can add both or you can add a, um, a condition, like if, if one of those is this, and so you can use your imagination, but now, now it's passing the test. Um, another test is for example, for the plot result. You can have this. Uh, actually, the ggplot object it saves the data inside the object, so you can test if the actual data that exists on your on your um, on your plot is the same that you input, for example, or, or the one you generated in in any function. So you can you can test if you. If the plot data is the same that that you input to it, for example, um, you can test if the uh, uh, you have the the layers. Uh, you you see the these object layers uh, we added. It's not the layers. Oh, okay, yeah, it's had no. It, there, there is one place that it says the for example the te the team the coordinates the environment that we present. That there is a lot of things inside the ggplot object that we, we you can, for example, if the we set the x and the mm. y, uh, anything that you that you pass is inside the here the, the aesthetic parameter of the of the ggplot function of the, the geom would be here inside this label. So you, you can test if the X and Y values were the one you, you, oh no, no, actually this one are the labels for the plot itself, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can explore this object, just use the, the this, this character and, and you can go inside it and explore what, what would you test inside it. So with that, you, you could be pretty sure that your, your output mm. would be the one you expect. Even if the final figure changes between operational system, like, oh, maybe it used a, a different font or it was output in a different manner, you, you, could, you can test most of the, if the data, the points, if the color, there is somewhere that you can find if the color is the one you expect. So yeah, this one was the same. And also with that, I can, I will, I will show something that is pretty common if you try to implement a ggplot function on on a package that actually this this way of of using the non standard evaluation that is ju just putting the 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 names of the columns actually um, on the current tests it will actually fail it will mm. say that this object is not uh, it don't exist on your on your environment. So you have to replace it with the string then, a string. No, yeah, actually not. There is a, a specific way of addressing that, that it's a more advanced um, concept that that's using the Arlang um, dot data. Um, if you never saw that before, um, it will, be kind of abstract, but I will just show it here. Just to you can you when you have the data, you you have actually to to address it like that inside packages, both for the ggplot and also for any any tidyverse function that uses non-standard evaluation, mm -hmm. like the if you use deployer select, for example. Deployer select on empty cars, uh, and I want just the MPEG column. If you try to run the checks with the code like that, it will complain about this. The same way that is actually saying that this MPEG 
symbol is not in scope, it will complain that your package don't don't have the 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 this code. So the, the same way you use the dot data. Um, it's just a it's a common it's a common warning that the the R check outputs I can try to run this just to to put uh, for example if I run the check don't know if it will take some time. Um, let's just oh actually it will also complain that I don't set the 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 dependencies né? I, I just call it to 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 function side package that I didn't add to my package. So they use this package has this um, use dep use package not no how actually use package that you you need to say here use ggplot2 and it will add the the ggplot2 to my to the dependence of the package. Oh, actually, to run through a lot of errors here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, let's check. Okay. Oh, the, the one that I that I would try to show is this one. It's uh, here. It's complaining about mm. that I, I use a link, ggplot, and dplyr functions, and I didn't uh, added those are dependencies in the package. But here, th this note is the one that I was trying to address. That saying that empty cars and MPG were were variables that are not that are not addressed by anything. So th this is the kind of things that you need to address with this dot, dot data um, operator. No uh, variable. I don't know how to call it. A pronoun. Yeah, they call it a data pronoun. Yeah, they, yeah. Here, here they have an example using it with. But it's, it's a more complex <laughs> subject. Yeah, that's what I was supposed to show. All right, awesome. I hope with this example, you, you can actually try to implement some, 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 more, some more plots with the tests. Those uh, those <laughs> plot errors, those are what I, I have many of those. <laughs> so I've tried to employ that, but I've, I'm going to try it again. <laughs> a hard with, 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 with which one? The putting the Rlang and the data in there. Um, in the GDF, oh, I get a lot of those um, notes on my checks, but I've just... I don't see oh it. yeah, and actually, so. I, I I didn't show the correct way of doing that because I here we, with this first example, I just I just created the 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 object here, but but the correct way of doing that is is actually adding the import. adding a, an import from mm -hmm. um, dot data. No, uh, I, I, also, I always forget it's first the. The package or the, so with the import from you don't need to add this one it will automatically and also with the pipe if you if you want to use the pipe inside your your package you you can add a import from a greater pipe oh, i forgot if, if it's first the the function of the of the package but uh, if you do that it's the just uh, have to, to check the, but yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> but also the um, the data pronoun is also a way of if if you want the for example if you want to to modify the column of a data frame or chain or or having the column that you want to plot as um, an argument of your function, you can use the, the the data pronoun to change the variable programmatically. 
I don't, I don't, I don't have a good example right now, but it's a way to so so you can let your user to to select which columns you want to plot or anything like that. Actually, there is a there is a vignette in the tiger in the the deployer package that that talks about that there is programming with tiger uh, with the player and, and there is also a programming with ggplot2 that covers this this topic i think I will, there is some... <laughs> yeah that's it <laughs> all right so um, yeah thank you lucio as always you're really um kind in sharing your knowledge i like that <laughs> And uh, so what are, what should we do next week then? Okay, yeah, we have to decide it. Uh, let me uh, drop the Google Doc. And then um, we will close. I was with the token. Yeah, the, the next topic is, it's not really easy. Yeah, what are we working on? So sharing um, our projects, I guess, and package idea. Yeah. And yeah, I don't think um, it shouldn't be a burden. I mean, if you don't have, uh, if you can't, don't have the time to make a presentation, just share um, what you want to do what, and what you have done so far, any challenges maybe. But of course, if you want to show something, it would be awesome. I guess. Oh. What do you think? Yeah, but I have a lot of ideas. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> what, what all of you <laughs> would like to do? <laughs> yeah, for me it's okay. I can. I, I have a good a good example for. Uh, I, I have a package that I am working on using reticulate, so like calling. Calling Python ah. Python functions inside R, it's it's also a good example that we can that, that I can show in this mm. in this next section, for example, like how have to test ever... Python functionality inside mm. R packages. Have you example. ever tried uh, Basilisk? No, ah, Bas Basilisk is the. Mm. It's also for calling Python. Yeah, I, I already but saw from, that, but I, I it's don't from know. Bioconductor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think, exactly. Uh, I think actually, it actually, uh, to, yeah. When I was searching for Py how to integrate Python, I I, I saw Basilisk, but uh, Reticulate is most more integrated with the at least the the Tidyar, the Tidyverse functions. It's easier to use Reticulate. Hmm. But from what I see, though, it seems like what Basilisk does is it actually calls a Reticulate and setting up the conda within that package. So if you install that package, mm -hmm. then it will automatically set up the conda environment. But I don't okay, know, last, okay. time I, last time I checked, the documentation is not that good, but there was a time when I installed a bioconductor package that is um, Basilis, and I don't have to set up the conda dependencies on my own. So that's amazing, I think. Yeah, yeah it's a... It would also be a good example of how to run that inside the um, in GitHub Action, for example, <laughs> how to set both yeah. the Python dependencies and the Python and the, and the R dependencies inside and a GitHub Action, for example. It's a good, it's a good example. Um, so I don't know. Because <laughs> actually, the the topic uh, after that is about. Date metadata and and license. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You guys have examples that we you would like to discuss next session. Yeah. I have a train wreck, so I'm gonna to try to get it back on the track, so to speak, on that shiny app I'm working on. I try. Oh, to... Shiny is also a nice example to to yeah. try to. Yeah. to show. Golem, because I use Golem when I do a shiny app, and it's it's. Yeah. Sets up the package it's it's wonderful it's a wonderful framework nice nice yeah but nice i, I would like to see that <laughs> like i said like i've kind of 
It's like, oh, you know, when I start and stop, I even said, <laughs> I'm going to do another project, do a flex dashboard. Then I was like, this morning, I was like, no, no, going back to a regular shiny app. I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that that it's, there's a complete change of the way you, you yeah. develop for using Golem. Not going, the shiny app's not going how I envisioned it in my head. <laughs> so. I'm gonna see what I can. Yeah, I, I the, the, the 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 times that I that I, that I developed shiny apps, I also do, did the those monolithic documents with everything mm. called inside the, the. So I, I I I I already read about Golem, but I, I haven't actually used it. So I, I need to use it also. I think if, even if I do a regular package, I'll still use Golem because it's a nice framework for. Yeah, it, it, it actually automates a lot of, of, yeah. of steps on the on the development. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think on GitHub Actions, I'm gonna to try to do some uh, I I have one package where I use it and but I want to get an artifact out of it. So I haven't figured that part out. So yeah, I, I don't have a good example of using the artifact with anything, but it's you, you can find a lot of examples on the yeah on the internet. Take another look at it. Yeah. All right. Oh, actually, one thing that I didn't address is there is a I found a um, a project on GitHub called ACT. Uh, from neck to neck to ACT, there is a way of running the GitHub action on your own computer to try to, if, if you don't if you don't want to update it to GitHub first, you you could run it on your own computer before. Hmm. Uh, it it actually uses Docker Linux container, so it, it it's capable only of running the the Linux the Linux workloads, not the macOS and Windows workloads, but it's also a good way if you don't don't want to wait for the GitHub action to to run on the remote instance, you could run it on your computer. Oh. Um, I, I actually didn't test it, so um, I also need to know if it works correctly. But I saw that there there is this kind of functionality also. Okay. All right, well, great job. I'll see you guys next week. Well, no. Yes, I gotta go. See you. See you next week. See you. Thank you. Awesome. See you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>